at the offset, I, I would like to thank Dr. Uh, Lalit uh, Verma and Dr. Bhuvan for uh, inviting me to this session. Um, I think almost everything what I wanted to say has been taken care of by my previous speakers, but still, anyway, I will go ahead. As um, most of people have said that this is a dying art. So since the introduction of buckling in the 50s, Scleral buckling has been a highly successful technique for the repair of regmatogenous detachment. But these days, this art is waning. Why? There may be many reasons. There are many reasons. The decreased practice may be partly because of the recent advances in the machine, the endoluminator system, the vitrectomy system, the high cut rates, the wide angle viewing system, etc., etc. But at the same time, inability to of the learners to observe their mentors and the mentors to teach their students the art of scleral buckling. As way back in early 90s, 91, 92, I was taught the indirect ophthalmoscopy by my teacher guru, Dr. P. N. Atpal. People like him are needed these days, you know. Uh, despite these issues, scleral buckling is the preferred treatment modality for many indications because buckling has a lower cost than vitrect me, the instrument, as well as for the patient. And it avoids many of the complications enumerated by Bouvon and uh, Martin, etc., uh, which can be seen in vitrect me. This also preserves the vitreous, which can be beneficial in the event that intravital injections are required, which are required many a times these days. Um, why, why did I want to speak in this forum these things because every month I get to see four to five cases of retinal detachment seen by a trained retinal surgeon of the younger generation and advised BB plus PPV plus silicon oil injection. And out of these four or five cases every month, maybe I get to operate only two cases. And these two cases, I do a buckle. And so in an year, I operate 25 to 30 such cases, out of which maybe four to five require a vitrectomy later on. But at least rest of them are saved of vitrectomy and its potential complications. So this trend of ev each and every case of detachment being done uh, vitrectomy should be re reversed. And we are also partly responsible for that. Advantage of scleral buckling, again, offers many advantages. It preserves the crystalline lens, so the accommodation in older patients, the vitreous is preserved so that you can uh, give your uh, intravital injections in a better way. For patients with extensive lattice degeneration, it provides a support, lifelong support or um, counter traction to the vitreous base and peripheral retina. Scleral buckling is an extraocular procedure unless you do a drainage procedure. So all the um, uh, complications of uh, infection and uh, endophthalmitis can be avoided in such cases. Also, if the procedure is done without gas, then there is no restriction on the patient to travel by air. And uh, if the patient is injected with gas, or sorry, silicon oil, then the problem of silicon oil removal and the attendant complications can be avoided. The cost is also lower, and because maybe one of the reasons why people are doing vitrectomy more and more because somebody from um, NHS, uh, the National Health uh, Service from UK, told me that the surgeon gets 10 times higher in UK if he does a vitrectomy as compared to a buckle. So maybe that is one of the reasons. In India also, that is the same. Medicare, as Dr. Kamal showed us, the incidence of uh, buckling procedures taken care of by Medicare is going down. You can see this uh, if I have to point out, black arrow, this black line. This is the buckle, this is the vitrectomy over period of 2002 to 2011. Um, have you ever th thought of what is the definition of a buckle? Why do you call it buckle? Buckle by, def uh, by dictionary means deformation of a structure under stress. And sometimes bu term buckle is also used synonymously with the form of an explant, uh, encircling explant. The medical dictionary says scleral buckling is a technique for repair of detachment of retina in which indentations or infoldings of the sclera are made over the tears in the retina 
so as to promote adherence of retina to choroid. The mechanics in involves uh, tying a piece of mm, silicon tire or a sponge on the sclera, which holds the retina against the sclera against uh, until the scarring takes place. So this is how this is the mechanics of a buckle. Previously, with the detached retina, normal uh, sclera, the traction was like this. When you put a buckle, the traction is going in the other direction. Um, identify and seal all the breaks. This is the best or uh, the first principle of retina detachment management. Sealing is done most commonly by cryo. Drain the subretinal fluid if required and apply tamponade which can be external or internal. How to proceed for a buckle? Thorough preoperative examination, accurate drawing, and break should be explained in the subretinal fluid. And this is where we all like these days, the younger generation. Thorough preoperative examination is a must. Dr. Lalit also has stressed about this, that we must see the uh, patient before the surgery and identify all the breaks. So my indications for buckling, any patient with clear media and dilating pupil, one or two anterior breaks, fake kick, pseudo fake kick or a fake kick. I don't want to differentiate between the pseudo fake kick or a fake kick eye. Inferior breaks, dialysis or PVR up to grade C1. I will give a trial in cases up to C1 also. Maybe more cases may not settle down. But then, as you said, Vitrectomy can any anyway can be done any any day. Relative contraindications, we know. So, I want to compare vitrectomy with buckling. Why do you, why do I want to avoid buck, uh, vitrectomy in cases which are bucklable? I am not against vitrectomy anyways. Nobody, nobody, none of us. Because here the posterior hyaloid remains quite adherent to retinal surface in the younger age group. Uterus is more formed, so itself can act as a tamponade. We probably forget this fact that the vitreous itself acts as a tamponade for the break. And um, in younger patients, there's high rate of cataract formation. Risk of redetachment after silicon oil removal is very well known. And as my teacher always used to say, that vitrectomy is the most unforgiving of any surgery. Uh, you can, if you cut the retina, that's it. There are many reports, some of which have been uh, presented by Dr. Bowen also. So even in cases of extensive PVR, you can get successful reattachment. And in this series by Akabana, he has uh, successfully attached seven out of seven retinal detachments with at least PVR grade C. Uh, the overall success rate is 94 in scleral buckling, while with uh, partial and vitrectomy, it is 71 to 92% with attendant advantages and disadvantages. There are complications of each and every procedure. Uh, this is a recent article which says that at six months after scleral buckling alone, the anatomical success rate was similar in fake and pseudo fake eyes, and the corresponding results after scleral buckling with vitrectomy were 82 and 80, 77 percent only. So there, they are comparable results. This one is from um, Nepal. And they say that even uh, at a low cost, they have also stressed this point that uh, in underdeveloped countries or developing countries, buckling is still should be the preferred method if it can be buckled. What are the visual outcomes? Uh, this study says that the visual outcome after vitrectomy as well as buckling were equally good from Vadu et al. In post-traumatic cases, it is very useful because in most of the times, these cases, if they are blunt trauma cases, you get a dialysis. And in almost all, I mean, 89 percent cases, the visual equity was improved. Uh, if we talk, if I talk of our experience of 27 years, approximately 5,000 buckles and more than 10,000 vitrectomies. We are presenting only results of last two years where uh, anatomical and visual outcomes of scleral buckling surgery in retinal retinal detachment was studied. Uh, this is a study of 206 eyes only 
because these these are only up in three years from two thousand nine to two thousand twelve. And after the results were seen, we believe that the scleral buckling, if done appropriately in appropriate cases, is better than vitrectomy in such cases. The visual acuity was also better, improved from 2.81 mean log mar to 1.21. And want to come to pseudophagic eyes now. In our series, there were 67 pseudophagic eyes which were operated and 59 were settled with buckling alone. So the success rate is 88 percent. So this myth of going for vitrectomy in each and every case of pseudophagic RD has to go whether it is bucklable or not bucklable. Recently I saw this patient who was operated in 2000, in the year 2000, young boy with a dial, with a, with multiple breaks. And if you look at this date, this is 27th January 19. He is maintaining 6, 9 vision, both eyes, and there is no change in the refractive error, no, no difference in the refractive error also. So 19 years have passed. I am showing this case because they came to me recently. This lady was operated in 2011, and look at this history. Cataract plus eye in the right eye, then secondary eye done in the right eye, cataract plus eye in the left eye, and eye explant has been done in the left eye. This is the left eye with inferior bullous RD. I could see a break. I buckled it and the vision as seen on sec, uh, 3rd of February, both I with glasses is 6-9. She was then implanted with the secondary IOL also. So even if it is pseudophagic and a complicated pseudophagia, if you can see the break, if there are few breaks which are anterior, no, no other uh, PV, not much PVR, then you can settle the retina. This is also pseudophagic eye with a superior bullous RD, settled with ret, uh, buckling alone, vision post-op was 6 9, 6 18, sorry. A case of dialysis, old RD with dialysis, pre improved. This is another case, 12 year old male. This is the picture after 7 years. Recently, this is the last case I want to show. 17th of January, this patient came to me and advised TPPV, MP, FAE, EL, SOI, inferior bullous RD, operated with a 5 millimeter silicon, split silicon sponge buckle, and post op vision was 660 on day 3rd. Another patient, Mr. RP, clear buckling done on 28th, post op day 3, retina settled, and vision is 636. Both these patients were advised vitrectomy. We all know the complications of buckling. I don't want to go into the details. Thank you. And as a final note, we I want to say that the popularity of this time-proven technique is waning due to recent advances in machines, instrumentation, and visualization systems. Despite these issues, buckling is preferred technique in many conditions because it entails low cost and avoids many potential complications. Lack of training is responsible for this because if you want a good success rate in buckling, you have to know indirect ophthalmoscopy with scleral indentation and not only indentation but palpation of retina during the surgery. Uh, people say that uh, why do buckling when you can do a vitrectomy, but when you are doing vitrectomy, then also you are doing a buckle along with it. So I want to at least give a trial in some cases where give a uh, do a buckle if the retina settles very well otherwise do a vitrectomy after two to four weeks so in my opinion if you can settle the retina with buckle alone you can give better vision than vitrectomy i would say that i would go to this extent thank you ready to take any questions